look, the the media landscape obviously is so fragmentative now. It's it's really difficult from an attribution standpoint to unless you have a really good mixed media model and and good attribution process, you know, processes and third party you know, things in place to really understand how you're best spending ad dollars for the positive ROI. <clears throat> you know, when I started <laughs> 25 years ago, we had an 800 number for a lot of direct consumer stuff. It was all linear television, completely 100% deterministic attribution. We knew exactly where it was coming from. We know how our ads paid out. And then over time, it's just fragmented into, you know, in the internet, in the connected, OTT, you still have linear got Amazon in the mix. You've got challenges with uh, third-party data. You know, we have the change in iOS. All of these things have kind of combined to create this incredible perfect storm of fragmentation in media that has really been challenging for advertisers, direct-to-consumer advertisers, to really understand um, how they're reaching their customer best. Beyond the fragmentation, are there particular challenges you're dealing with in terms of like the persistence of fraud or the crowded supply chain that really make your life hard? Yeah, I think so. I mean, look, the, you know, the change in accessibility to, you know, user data has definitely been a challenge, right? You know, Apple started with iOS and 95% plus of those users opted out of being able to share their data with us. And as advertisers trying to reach the consumer in a direct way, um, that was very valuable. Right, that data ad set was was immeasurably important to us being able to prospect, target, retarget customers, knowing what their habits were, knowing that um, with an immense amount of cookie data that we could track and follow and understand how to best approach them with the right message at the right time. With that gone, it's been very challenging, and you know, entrepreneurs are in the mix trying to find their ways around it. But that isn't slowing down. You know, you see Google, Firefox, even Safari. I think Google, by the end of this summer, is going to get rid of all um, ability to really, you know, reach the consumer data in a meaningful way. So, you know, marketers are going to be challenged. Advertisers are going to be challenged. Agencies are going to be challenged to try and really get to the consumer in the best way with the best data possible. Given those challenges, have you been participating in these, these efforts to try and, you know, streamline the supply chain, the, these direct paths to publicate publishers or consumers? Has that been helpful? Yeah, for sure. I mean, internally here at Canal, for sure, we've addressed it. Our business intelligence group has created Tribute, which is an attribution model. We have a pixel that sits atop everything, right? So we track the consumer from a multi-touch um, standpoint all the way down every channel of distribution inclusive of radio and linear and connected and OTT, probabilistic and deterministic. So most good marketers and agencies are doing that. And then they're leaning into all of the, you know, third party avenues, um, you know, federated learning, machine learning models that are starting to essentially, I guess, crowdsource data in a decentralized way so that we can still keep that user data private, but we can use it in a crowdsourced way with others to help influence what our buying decisions are. And that's really, that's, that's you know, kind of taking it out of that walled garden and giving that, you know, that power to the advertisers and I think eventually to the consumer as well. Have you had any, any experience or luck working with blockchain? Is, it, is that something that has a lot of potential to help streamline this process? Yeah, I think it does. I mean, we, we haven't worked with blockchain as it relates to you know user data or ad buying yet, but we're staying on the cutting edge and the forefront of it and watching it. Um, conceptually, of course it does, right? It gives complete transparency. It gives credibility. It takes a lot of friction out of the marketplace. It takes relationship out of the marketplace. It level sets fraud. Um, so conceptually, 100%, that's something that we're interested in. We're just not utilizing it yet today. We will when it's meaningful enough to pull the rubber. How do you balance the, the need for precision and really strong attribution with the consumer privacy that is going to be paramount and continues to be uh, under scrutiny? Yeah, for sure. I mean, GDRP and the California Consumer, the CCPA, you have to be compliant, right? So you have to have good legal perspective to make sure you're compliant with it and um, and respect that, that, you know, protection of the consumer data. But in the same vein, as a marketer, it's always our job to push the envelope to try and, and get the best data possible into our systems to make the best buying decisions. And like I said, so we're doing it with 
with pixeling. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's really about creating your own relationship with your consumers, right? Whether it's them opting in through a QR code or whether it's them coming to your website and opting in and agreeing to whatever your principles are, whether it's, you know, I'm going to track you with cookies or I'm going to get your email or I'm going to get your cell phone, which is becoming one of the most important ways of, of reaching and understanding a consumer. But gathering all that data on a first party basis is ultimately what the goal is and where it's really, really important for us as marketers to be able to develop that relationship in a very transparent way with people that want to know about what we're trying to sell them, messages we're trying to drive them, et cetera, and giving them the ability to also opt out of that. Lastly, Rob, you mentioned, we talked about how um, tuned in you are to the direct response market. Given all the identity changes you've discussed, are you, are you seeing a lot more of those brands come to television and, and can they can they do the same things they like to do in CTV? Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you look at, you know, the, there's a bifurcation of brands that either started in linear te television or started in digital, right? We have both. We have ones that cross over from one to the other. What I know for sure is that the scale of television in both CTT, OTT, and linear is unmatched. Um, you know, we have a lot of digital advertisers, VC-backed companies, um, you know, competitive brands, competitor brands that are eating each other's lunch in digital, right? They're bidding each other out of brand and unbranded search. They're, you know, they're trying to lever for position in Amazon, et cetera. When those brands go to television, and they reach that 45 plus demographic that's like probably 75% of the US spend wallet in the US, making retail buying decisions, et cetera, et cetera. It really helps. It helps float all boats in that ocean. And it does some magical things. You know, when you can target people through television, through connected television, um, and then retarget them down the line, what you're doing is you're driving an entire um, movement of activity around that brand. So when somebody sees something on television, connected television, and they go onto their laptop and they search it in Google and then end up at Amazon, forces Amazon, Amazon to spend money against that brand and see it in category. And all of a sudden, you, your brand and your category, your brand in category starts becoming the important one. And it really starts to separate you then from this you know, concentrated digital effort. And the same goes true for brands that are concentrated heavily in television but ignore all of the digital channels that are out there, right? You have to have both. It has to be a multimedia view and, and plan. And that's what we do best, to be honest.